Hello and welcome to the DPN car collection. We're on our silver Rover 45 1.6 and um, on the way home from the last journey as we got near to uh, home we could um, smell almost this sort of hot brake smell um, and when we stopped this felt pretty warm the uh, brake and this wheel and uh, here as uh, as well and what we suspect is possibly the um, piston inside the caliper has seized up as that's what it's done before on um, one of our other 45 so what we're going to do is remove it and probably change that piston and the sliding bolts as well so the first thing to do is to uh, remove the wheel and then we can start the job Right, so that's the wheel off. We do that on the other side as well because we'll be doing the job on both sides, but I'll just try and follow on this side at the moment. Right, so what we're doing is clamping up the brake pipe and uh, that's so when we remove it, you get as little fluid as possible come out, hopefully none, but it may just slightly drip. You will have to bleed the brakes anyway, so it's not really to prevent that, it's just to stop lots dripping out all over the uh, driveway. Right, so now loosening the nut on the uh, back of the pipe so that pipe can then uh, come away. Right, so before we just loosen the two slip bolts, I just thought we'd show you that um, it is very, very stiff. So although you could turn it when the wheel was on, uh, normally you should be able to turn it even with the wheel off so it is dragging although it appears it had eased off a little bit from how tight it must have been on that journey home it still certainly isn't right so now i'm doing the uh, two slip bolts uh, top and bottom you can see this one here now we've got the wheel turned and then we'll be moving up to this one right so as you see we've started to undo these uh, slip bolts and often they will undo but if you can see here the little flat bit here is actually uh, turning so what we're gonna have to do is put a spanner on that which you do sometimes have to do to hold it so we can then undo the um, slip bolts and take them right out which in turn will let us get the uh, caliper away So that's both of those um, bolts out now. Right, so now what we're going to do, now those bolts are out, is remove this main part of the caliper um, because we think those pistons are seized uh, it's going to be a little bit tight coming out which it is so we're leaving it out with that crowbar to bring it out if they weren't seized it would probably be slightly easier than that to come out although still you know doable more than possible to get out now that's out we will be able to then remove the brake pipe which goes on the back which as you see earlier we loosen that bolt and hopefully if the uh, clamp is working we won't lose too much brake fluid it'll just be what's in the pipe dripping out and uh, that's the caliper away and what we've done is put it in a tray because there will be some brake fluid dripping out and as you can see the bolt that went in uh, actually very little dripping out so that clamp is doing its job now all we've got to do is remove the um, little brake shoes we put them all in together into that one um, tray there. Right, so we're now going to remove the carrier assembly. Not everyone removes this, we always do because we like to properly clean it up, possibly even repaint it up in our case. And of course we're going to be changing these um, sliding pins as well. Remove the little shims. And uh, that is these two bolts, one there that the um, ratchet's just going on, and uh, one up the top here. Right, 
Right, so what we've done there, if you see, we've took that little bolt that comes out of the brake pipe because uh, that obviously could get easily lost sitting there and make sure that the uh, copper washers are on it as well. Once again, we've put it in the tray with all the other brake bits. And that is the uh, carrier away. Now that's all away, we can then uh, start to clean that up. And uh, as I said, what we do is we buy um, a piston kit rather than changing the whole caliper, which is what we actually used to do is buy a, a new caliper. We now buy the um, piston kit, which gives you the piston and the rubber seal, and we buy the sliding bolts as uh, well as uh, another separate little kit. And we'll hopefully show you all that going in and uh, us removing it and cleaning it up as well. Right, so now all the uh, caliper is uh, away, I just thought I'd show you around the back here so you can hopefully see where the um, two um, mounting points were that we undid those bolts and removed that carrier away. And also what you can see in here, although it's nothing to do with this job as such, is the um, ABS ring and it's like a load of teeth and there's a sensor which you can't see from here and that's sensing the... Um, almost the pulses as the teeth go round, so um, that's what that little ring is for. To do is to remove the disc, and uh, on this disc it's actually two Phillips screws that hold it. Uh, we've got it lined up so it's one top and uh, one bottom there. And that's the disc away. So now we're over to the driver side, the opposite side to what we've just been doing. It'll be a case of removing all that again. I won't show that because it's very similar. And although this side hasn't seized on, and actually you can probably see the paint's in better condition where it didn't get warm, we would always do both sides. So uh, when we're in the workshop, hopefully we'll be able to show you us uh, doing both of those calipers and refurbishing them. Right, so now we've got both the brake uh, calipers from both sides in their trays with all the relevant bits together. And what we're going to do now is go through and clean them, um, wire brush them first, then clean them off, uh, ready so that we can repaint them and, of course, refurbish them and put the new pistons and seals in the caliper as well. So what we're doing more or less now is just wire brushing them off first. Right, so as you see, we're doing the cleaning up stage, but of course, before we clean the main caliper, we want to remove this piston, and you can see just how bad they are in there and rusty. Obviously, it's the outside that's caused the seizing, but they just aren't in very good condition, and nor the seals. So, um, you know, it's all really been confirmed. We definitely do need to change, and we like to change them anyway but of course we've got to get that out before we clean it all up um, there's a couple of ways you can get it out one way is you can pump on the brake pedal of course when it's still connected and that will gently push it out but um, it could end up being messy especially when it eventually comes out um, another way and we often use that is compressed air and you put the compressed air into the hole where the brake pipe goes in normally or what we're going to do is um, push it out with uh, with a punch uh, normally you're only sort of doing this if you're changing that um, piston anyway so you haven't got to worry about damaging the piston doing it that way but you have got to watch that you don't damage the thread um, when you're doing it and that's even when you're putting the air toy in you could push it in and damage that thread so all those ways you should um, be watching out for that Right, so we're going to give this a go. This might be slightly tight because this is the one that was seizing and this is the one we are sort of following the progress. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it does feel like it is quite um, tight in there. Of course, we will be doing all of this on the other caliper and clean it all up, but we'll just follow the one side and I might show a few shots of us doing the other one, but uh, generally we'll try and follow this one in particular.
Okay, so that was really tight, and I assume that um, the compressed air would have struggled to have got that out. Now, they can see where it's seized. Yeah, that's so, where it's been grabbing. Yeah, so there's a really nice example there. We can clearly see that's where it's seized, and you can see the uh, rust in there. So, yeah, that definitely was the one caused the problem, which we knew from the brake seizing on, but it's always nice if you can, can see that. And if we look inside, that's where the that's, uh, okay. that's where the um, piston was sitting, and that um, is okay. And you can see the old sill in there, which we are remove out, and we're also the uh, cleaning out in there as well. There's the dust cover. Ah, so that's giving you a little bit better look in there. From what I just showed, just you can see there, it's uh, in good condition there, but just uh, dirty, and we will obviously be cleaning all of that out. And this is just to get the seal out. And there is the seal again, we're going to be changing that and that all comes in with the uh, kit. You'll get the new rubber seal, the new piston and uh, of course the new dust seal as well. So we're now going to be cleaning the main caliper up, uh, wire brushing it like before. But if you can see there, that little double groove at the entrance uh, is looking a little bit grubby and uh, grotty in there. So we're going to wire brush that out of a small wire brush. But it is important not to take the wire brush down inside where the piston goes. Uh, we'll be cleaning that up with a honing tool later on and the wire brush would... Um, obviously scratch and uh, damage that but we do want to get that little ridge or two ridges that the seals go in a little bit cleaner uh, first then we'll go on to wire brushing the rest of the outside Right, so now what we're going to do is just spray it over with some brake cleaner just to get any last sort of dust and residue off. And then it'll be ready then later on for spray painting and uh, carrying on with the job. Right, so the other thing that's worth doing at this stage is to uh, make sure that the brake bleeding nipple isn't seized. And uh, that's what we're doing now. It also gives us a chance to uh, clean that through as well and uh, check there's no restrictions or blockages in it. Yeah, so that is now all ready for us to uh, paint and to prepare for putting the new piston and seal kit in. Right, so we've more or less got that side all cleaned up and of course we've got all the caliper to do on the other side of the car. So I'm not going to completely show you all that because we've been all through that, but that's what we're going to get on with doing that other side now. But I think one of the things we did leave out, the two sliders, um, we removed them and uh, they've got little rubber boots on them, but the kit comes with those little rubber boots, I think, so we'll be able to replace them. I just thought I'd add in as well is that these are often the things that uh, seize. Um, in our case, it was the, um, the piston that had seized, but uh, sometimes it is those sliders that seize, so um, they're always worth cleaning up. I mean, we're going to do that on this job, but they're one of the things that are always worth checking. So more or less, we're just going to clean that up like we did on the uh, other one. Right, so we're continuing to clean the other side, but I just thought I'd show you this bit. As when we got the piston out of the other caliper, we used a punch and uh, pushed it out, and that was because we 
guessed it would be seized, which it was, and was difficult to get out. But one way you can get them out, especially if they're not seized, is to use uh, compressed air, which is how we often get them out. We thought we'd show you that other way, just as an alternative, because we thought we'd be a bit stiff and the compressed air would really need some uh, power to do it. Yeah, and that's it um, popped out, so there's another way you can do it. Still pretty rough. Yeah, and as you can see there, even that one, which wasn't giving us problems, has still got a lot of rust in there. So even that, although it wasn't seizing in the same way as the other one, definitely was going to be a problem. Yeah, so yeah, so I thought I'd just show you that, and we'll get on with cleaning that side now. So we're just continuing to clean everything up. We're cleaning that caliper up after we remove the piston with air pressure. And uh, then we're putting all the stuff in a tray cleaned up, along with the other tray with the um, other side stuff cleaned up. Right, so as you've been seeing, we have been uh, cleaning all the brake parts up, but um, when we'd finished wire brushing and we still wasn't happy with the finish and really just wasn't getting the paint off in the way that uh, we wanted. So hopefully you see a little bit before this of a sandblasting with our little sandblasting cabinet. And hopefully you can see the uh, difference that's made. It's got all the paint off um, all the way around, but uh, it's also got rid of a lot of this sort of almost black tarnished metal as well. So uh, we're certainly a lot more pleased with it. We have to uh, make sure it's definitely clean now and there's no sand in there. And then we can go on to paint them and put the new seals in as well. But I thought at this stage where we've got one completely sandblasted and the other one still as it was just after the wire brushing and the cleaning with the parts fluid, the difference between them. Uh, that's the sandblast cabinet we're using which is um, a pretty standard little home workshop sandblaster and uh, also what we're happy about i'll just let you have a look inside we're using like a a glass sandblasting media and that seems to be working quite well um Initially, when we set this up, and we have seen this on YouTube as well, a lot of people do have problems with these, getting them to work, and we did the same. What we've had to do is get a second compressor so that we've got two working together to up the volume of air, not the pressure of the air, but the volume, so that um, you can keep the air volume you need, because it's more or less running almost like you have in a, a blow jet nozzle and holding your hand on the trigger it's emptying the air reserves very quick and what we've also done is uh, fitted a hoover down there I think it's going to be a job to show you we've got a hoover that's extracting all the dust out and uh, you see that hole there that's where we've connected it in because when you get these sandblasting cabinets all they have is um, a little vent there which um, obviously it's never going to filter anything out because there's no suction. They just build up with lots of dust. So by having a hoover sucking it out, and it does go through one of those little um, cyclones as well to uh, get the sort of dust and sand out before it gets in the hoover and damages it. So uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show you that as well while we're doing the sand blasting. But uh, yeah, we're certainly pleased and that's going to make it a lot better finish for when we paint and I'll just show you a little bit more of a sandblast and then we'll get on with all the bits we uh, want to clean. So we're continuing, as you've seen, to sandblast the calipers and uh, this second set are coming up well. There's still a little bit more to do, so we're going to carry on sandblasting and cleaning all the bits we uh, need to. And uh, then we'll uh, carry on with the next stage. Right, so that's all the brake parts sandblasted. Um, we've even done the edges of the discs and uh, the rims there as well because they were painted so they can be freshly painted uh, and we've got the dust 
um, shields or sort of protect shields from weather on the brake discs. We've got those sandblasted as uh, well, so we've we'll able to paint them up. So uh, yeah, that's it all done. We've got them in two separate trays. That's to make sure none of the bits get mixed up. We've even managed to sandblast the uh, little sensor wire brackets as well so um, we've got everything sandblasted that we wanted to so it really should be a lot easier when it comes to painting them right so we've sandblasted the calipers as you see and what we've done now is just blown them through to make sure any of the media isn't left behind and what we like to do then is to uh, hone them out now technically it's not as crucial as some calipers because the seal stays still in the caliper and it's actually the piston that moves up and down and that's another good reason for changing those pistons but we still like to make sure that the surfaces have been uh, honed out so we use a, a little tool as you can see they're attached to uh, a drill and what we do a little bit of WD-40 so we just go round a little bit to make sure that they're um, nice and uh, ready and as you can see that surface now is uh, looking nice and prepared and uh, ready what we've done we've not painted them yet because we found it's one of those things if we paint them first we're going to mark the paint but if we do this first you've then got to technically mask up the sill and make sure you don't get any paint on the new piston what we decided is that is better than us painting them all and then marking it while we do all this side so that's why we've done it in that order what we've done there is just put a little bit of brake cleaner in them then to uh, clean out the oil we used whilst we were honing them so just doing the second caliper as we did before and again a little bit of WD on the tool. We've also put a little bit into the uh, caliper and it's just the same procedure as before. And uh, once again hopefully you can see that that surface is looking uh, much better and uh, ready for us to start rebuilding the caliper. So we're all ready to rebuild the calipers. As I said, we get a rebuild kit. Uh, this is the rebuild kit company we've um, bought stuff from. And you seem to find them on eBay when you do a search. Their stuff seems to come up when you're searching for over 45 stuff. And um, we've used their stuff before and it's been good. So we've um, bought the same again this time. And you get the uh, new pistons, which we think is important in the kit, rather than using the original ones. And uh, then you get the um, seal kits for both and you can buy them individually or you can buy them in pairs and what we did we bought them in um in pairs so that um we've got it all there it makes it easier and um, what we've also done is bought the uh, pins kit as well because we wanted to change them and you get all the boots and the bolts and the grease so we've got everything now to completely rebuild the calipers from scratch and what we do we take you through the process with one of them and then repeat it again on the uh, second one also don't forget while you're watching this video to have a look after you've finished watching it at uh, some of the other videos we do they're all there and also in playlists so uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video and of course you can visit our twitter page and our instagram page where we're constantly doing updates so we're ready to start rebuilding this uh, caliper we've got all the stuff ready and uh, what we need for this caliper we've got the uh, sort of dust seal the main seal we've got the uh, piston out and we're just going to quickly compare it with the um, old one just to make sure that we have been sent the right one which uh, yeah is looking as it should do and there you can see as well look at that just how rusty the other one is to the uh, nice new one as well we've got the little packet of um, grease uh, for the kit as well which you can see in that old kit we'll be using the new one and uh, we're ready to start building it we actually normally find from experience the difficult bit seems to be not so much getting the ceiling or the piston in but it's actually getting this dust cover to sit right and attach itself to both the caliper and the piston but we'll see how it goes with uh, this set we're just putting the um, special sort of grease that comes with the uh, kit into uh, all the places that we need to at the moment.
Right, so we've also put that sort of silicon grease onto the um, rubber seal and we're just going to put that in. And that rubber seal, if you notice, there's like two um, grooves running all the way around and that one goes in the bottom groove or the groove furthest away from the top. And then the uh, second groove that's there is for the dust seal to go in a little bit later on. But as you see, that goes in fairly um, easily, which it uh, should do. That seal we normally find they do as well. Right, so what we're going to do next is put this um, dust cover and protector on. As I said, that's often sometimes the difficult bit. Um, if you can see here, this little lip here is the bit that goes into that seal there. So we're going to put this actually into the caliper first. And then this little lip here is then what ends up in the relevant lip on that piston. What we find that's the problem when you're pushing the piston in, it either won't go into the lip on the piston or it ends up removing the lip from there. But we'll put it in here, push it through and uh, see how it goes and hopefully we can get it to line up. So all we're doing now is just positioning this cylinder and you've really got to sort of feel your way round and uh, get that lip in all the way around. So we're going to get on with uh, doing that. Right, so we've now got this um, dust protector seal in and uh, it's a job job. Hopefully you can see that the under flap is now sitting in that seal and this flap here is ready to seal onto the piston when we put it in there and as I say we're going to push that through and hopefully a push through and this will then pop through into that lip but it normally is uh, quite difficult to um, initially do so it does take a little bit of fiddling about and patience and eventually normally it just goes in and suddenly it's all working normally. So again, we're just putting a little bit of um, silicon grease on the uh, piston there. Right, so as we said, it is a bit of a fiddly job and we've been fiddling around and sometimes what doesn't work before then for some reason this time does work and I think every time we've done these it always seems to be a different way that gets this sill on uh, what we've done this time in the end is actually put the sill over the piston first and then dropped it down and tried to slowly work that sill in and we think that has gone in all the way around that would be a case of pushing it down the problem is if it hasn't gone in what you can end up doing is tearing this seal which in the past we uh, have done so we're sort of very cautious when we uh, when we do it so now we're going to slowly push it down and hopefully the uh, seal has gone all the way around there and then we'll drop into this lip here and it'll be uh, working as it should do and it is quite a tight fit when you push these uh, down yet yeah, and it's uh, gone in so this time that's what's uh, worked and we'll give it a go on the second um, caliper and hopefully that'll work as well so that's the uh, seal and the dust cover all in with the new new piston so uh, yeah that seems to have worked this time right, so i just thought i'd show you this what we've done to make sure that that uh, sill has gone into that rim or the dust cover has gone into that rim on the piston we've just from the back gently pushed the piston forward um, with this paintbrush that's there something that's um, nice and uh, soft and not going to damage the piston yeah, it's basically just pushed it gently forward like that and um, that's brought it forward so we can just make sure that seal definitely has sealed onto the caliper or locked into the caliper and also locked into that ridge on the uh, piston which it has so it's just another way of sort of definitely double checking that dust seal has sealed all the way around and of course we've looked all the way around through this hole here as well to make sure that the um, back is sealed in Right, so we're on the second caliper. I thought I'd show you the process again because it is a, a nice, interesting one to uh, see. It's sometimes good to see it for a, a second time as uh, well. Hopefully, it'll go as well as the first one. Again, we've um, cleaned out in there. Again, even though they're all clean, just before we do it to make sure no dust or dirt has settled in, uh, we've wiped off the um, new piston as uh, as well there as you can see to make sure that's uh, nice and clean and then as before we put some of that um, silicon grease um, all round inside here and uh, on the seals and also that rubber dust cover that comes with the kit as well.
Right, so once again we've got uh, everything laid out that comes with the uh, kit we've got the seal there the dust cover the little packet of silicon grease and what's nice about this kit it even comes with this little uh, red push-on plastic bit that uh, covers up the um, bleed nipple on the uh, caliper until you um, come to uh, fit it but it is nice that uh, you get that and you can even put that on afterwards to protect it uh, also the kits come with the little rubber boots for the sliding pins we have bought the kit which comes with them as well so we'll have those as spares if we ever need them so as before we're just putting that silicon grease inside the caliper we'll put a little bit on the um, sill itself a little bit on the piston and uh, also on the uh, dust cover seal as well so that's um all ready for us to uh, to fit and then once all the silicon grease is on both it's a case of just working that sill into the uh, second groove the groove furthest away from us And as you can see there it's just sitting in the uh, second groove leaving this groove once again for the dust seal to drop into when we put it on so as like before and as this works for us this time we're going to do the same we've put the dust cover onto the um, piston low down and then we'll put it into the um, caliper and as we push it down we'll work the sill into that groove and then push it up so it drops into uh, that groove and hopefully as it worked last time for us it'll work uh, again again it will be a little bit of a fiddling about job to do but um, it's worth it in the end because if you get it right you don't damage the seal because as I said it's very easy to uh, to tear the seal when you're doing this so we're just going to work that seal round now. So we're just going to work that seal round now and um, then we'll proceed. So we've uh, gone round the edge and got that rubber in and what we've used is one of those little orange um, plastic trim tools you can see there. So we've used them to slowly work the sill in. Once again anything that's not too sharp should uh, work and now if hopefully it's gone in we'll be able to slowly push it down and uh, then the uh, dust seal will drop into that little rim there that you can see on the piston. And uh, there it's dropped in. Sometimes you uh, just have to make sure the piston's going down nice and uh, straight. And what we do then is just check the rim is uh, in nicely. Right, so what we're doing just like before now is just pushing out the piston just uh, a little bit through the uh, back with uh, a wooden paintbrush. Anything that's sort of wooden or soft that's not going to damage that new piston. That just makes sure that... Um, when it comes out when you're breaking that all the seal is in and it's not going to come out which again you can see there it's working as it should we just push that gently back in yeah. and that one is all ready with the other one now right so the last thing to do is to just put that little red dust cover onto the uh, bleed nipple which as we said before is nice actually that this kit does provide that and uh, that'll just stop any dirt getting in there and uh, we'll probably even leave that on after to protect it as well but the next thing now is to uh, do the slider bolts which again we've um, bought a kit for that so that's what we're going to do next right so now we're going to be um, refurbishing the carriers of course these uh, carriers have the sliding pins because it's only um, a one piston caliper uh, so that is quite important because without these uh, working properly the uh, brakes will never work right and will seize on and uh, damage your pads and um, a lot more so it's always worth doing these we don't always change the sliding pins and uh, all the bits that come with the kit but because they weren't in great condition and because we're doing such a big refurbishment it seems silly not to and the kits aren't that expensive online either this is the kit we've got so it comes with the two uh, sliders the new 
bolts you've got the um little rubber dust shields and again that like silicon grease and uh, technically those bolts are supposed to be changed every time anyway and even some brake pad kits actually come with those those bolts so really that's why we decided to do it because you're getting it all there and it's all going to work nicely we can put all the new grease in and it is a fully refurbished caliper so uh, that's what we're going to do next What we will be doing is painting these carriers. And again, it was one of those things. Do we fit the new sliding kit um, and then paint them or paint them and fit the sliding kit? And once again, we decided we didn't want to damage all the paint. So it's easier to fit this first and then just be careful when you're painting it. And also that way they can sit there for a bit completely dry for when we come to fitting them back to the car. And it is just a case of getting that rubber seal to just go over the little lip that's uh, on the carrier. Right, so all we're going to do is just put the bolts um, loosely in the um, top of the sliders, ready for when it comes to fit them. And that is that slider then refurbished and uh, ready to go back on, of course, once we've painted it. Right, so we're just going to do the uh, second carrier, very similar process, of course, to the uh, other one. And then once it's in, we're just moving it up and down there to um, check that it is moving nice and uh, freely. It also shows you how freely uh, it should move. And probably if you uh, take your own set out, you'll find that uh, they won't be moving as freely as that. And that's why it's um, certainly worth cleaning it all out and re-greasing them, even if you don't change the pins. But as we said, because... We are um, doing this full rebuild and paint. It seems silly to not change the uh, pins for new ones. And the chances are it's possible they could be uh, original pins because there's no reason why they would have necessarily been changed. And that just also makes sure that rubber sill is uh, on properly as well. And that's the second carrier all refurbished and uh, once again ready for painting. So we're now ready and starting to paint the brake calipers and uh, discs. As you remember, we wire brushed them and then sandblasted them. But uh, what you normally find when you sandblasted something is the rust starts to come through straight away. So what we're going to do is cover them, as you can see there, in the uh, rust killer. We use the Vactan rust killer. Uh, we're going to go over all the areas we're going to paint and that'll just give for a better surface to then put the uh, paint on. So that's what we're doing at the moment right so just a quick update we've now got all the uh, brake parts painted with the um, rust killer after sandblast them and that's just as they're sitting there they don't just suddenly rust over but uh, it also gets rid of any little bits of rust so they almost acts like kind of a sort of a roughing up undercoat we find it seems to work well for uh, us and uh, you may see here what we've done is bought new brake shields because uh, I think sometimes it's one of those things you try and hope you can save the uh, old ones but once we cleaned them and sandblasted them uh, it just as you can see this one there's big bits uh, missing and uh, this one is looking pretty rusty and there's some little rust holes in it so although you could technically repair them they're never going to be right and um, to do all that work and put them back we decided just wasn't right and probably really we knew that all along anyway but you still try and clean things up sometimes in the hope that it'll work uh, so we've got some new brake sort of dust shields or protect 
collectors. Uh, we've got them from Rimmer Brothers. They seem to be the only ones that do them. Um, when you look online generally, there's um, not a great selection for Rover 45 uh, brake shield covers, but they do do them. So we've got them both there. What we will do is you won't leave them in this black. We'll probably give them a light rub down and uh, then paint them so they are definitely protected and less likely to go rusty in the future. Right, so we've got the new brake shields um, just gently rubbed down and we've removed the labels that are on both of them so they've just got a slight key um, to take the paint as we said we're going to paint them so they've got a little bit more protection and hopefully last longer and are matching with our colour schemes as uh, well right so we've got the calipers all masked up and um, the rust protect or rust killer we've put on that's all dried so we're now putting on the uh, red brake and uh, caliper paint that's what we use uh, it's a halfords red and uh, what we find is that it seems to be the only red that really has the colour we want. We've bought other reds in the past uh, online and elsewhere, but it never seems to be the red that we get from uh, Halford. So we normally always try and get that, and it does seem to go on nice. It's quite a nice sort of thick paint. Normally it takes uh, a couple of coats. The first one always goes on smeary, but we always prefer using paint over um, spray paint because one, you can get it on where you want it rather than the spray going in everywhere but you also just seem to get a much better shinier thicker looking coat and it does seem to last longer in most cases so we're going to get on with that now right so uh, we've got the first coat of paint on the calipers and the carriers now it's the disc brakes to do and we normally do the um, rim there the inner part here and then uh, under there and i've got them on them um, rolls of tape just to take them off the table so hopefully i can get all the bits painted without them sticking to the cardboard we've got protecting our table right so that's all our brake bits with the second coating on the uh, calipers and carriers and uh, the disc brakes they're looking much better all we've got to do is let them uh, dry off over the next couple of days and uh, if I come across here we've got the brake shields uh, now done in there I think it's their third coat but they're now starting to look as they should do as well so we've got all the brake parts that we've painted all together now. They're uh, all ready back to uh, fit. So I just thought I'd show that little shot of them all together before we fit them. So we've still got a little bit to uh, do on these. And we'll explain that a little bit more. We're going to remove that part there to make it ease of fitting and uh, removing them. And uh, we've still got some of the masking tape to remove. But uh, apart from that, we're all ready now to start the uh, fitting of them. Right, so we're now ready to fit the shields back. But you might have noticed when we were painting them, we've left that little bit there unpainted. And uh, that's because when these shields fit, they uh, were fitted on first, and then the sort of hub and uh, bearing were put on over the top. So technically, the only way to get these off or to put new ones on is to remove that hub and uh, bearings, which we don't want to do. Now, we were lucky the old ones were so rusty, we were able to just remove that bit quite easily and get them off. What we're going to do on these is actually cut this little bit out. One, to make it easier to fit. Also, we don't want to remove that hub and bearing. And the other thing is we want to have to remove them in the future. So we're going to cut that small bit out so they will slide over the back and go on we don't really know why they weren't done like that originally and we certainly think that's a worthwhile adaption it's what we did on the last set that we did so that's what we're going to do first is just cut that small bit out and we're also hoping we've got some new belts and uh, they're going to fit okay as well Right, so we've now cut the uh, section out we wanted to. Uh, we've just used some tin snips because we thought they'd be easier than trying to cut it out with any kind of um, metal saw. And uh, now it's going to be a case of sliding it on and uh, hoping we've cut enough out. Thank you. 
and uh, that's it on. We had to cut slightly more off than we'd hoped, but uh, once it's on, you can see it's nice and securely on, and it'll just be those three bolts down there that are hold it on, and it'll allow us to take it on and off if ever we need to remove it to do other work. Right, so now I'm putting those little um, bolts in. As I said, we've got some new ones. What we've got is the type with a little Allen key head on them. And what we've found is, uh, whether it's by design or by uh, luck, that the two holes on this uh, plate here where when you put the disc on you get like two little screws that uh, help locate it they go in through these holes here but they actually line up with the uh, screws that hold the bolt on if you uh, turn it round so it makes it a little bit easier to get it on so uh, yeah that's something that'll make it a little bit easier for us and it might be worth knowing so we're now going to do those three bolts up and uh, then the shield will be on, then we'll go over to the other side and uh, do exactly the same. So I'll just come over to the driver's side and just show you that that shield is now on and fitted as well. And as you can see we've got the new uh, little Allen key bolts in there as well. So uh, we're now ready to start putting the brakes back on. Right, so we're ready to put the discs back. We've put a little bit of copper slip into the um, two holes where the locating screws go. And uh, also we're putting a little bit of copper slip just in there. Not a lot, just a little bit, just so that we don't get any um, sticking when it comes to re-removing it. Those two holes there mm. are for jacking the disc off if it gets stuck. You put a bolt in it. Yeah. If you put a bolt in there, and there, it jacks the disc off if it gets stuck. And then it's just a case of putting the two little locating Phillips screws in. So now it's time to put the carrier back. We took the two sliding pins out there that's still got some masking tape on. And uh, we're just putting a little bit of copper slip on the two bolts that hold the carrier on up on the um, assembly by the disc brake. with the carriage just a case of lining it up and then getting those two bolts in which we're going to get on with and they're doing. And then it's just a case of talking them up to the right torque setting. And as we said uh, earlier, we get our torque settings from the Haynes manual and the uh, X-Part Rover disc that you can put in your computer. Right, so the next thing to do is to then put the sliding pins back in. We've put the um, right grease that come with the kit onto those, then just getting that little rubber boot over the uh, seal there so they're sealed. And that's some both in. Right, so we're now at the point of putting our refurbished calipers back on. What we've done is uh, bought new brake pads because we didn't want to change all that and not have them on the brake pads. Although not really worn down, we're certainly looking um, old. And what we've done, actually, it's quite a nice set. It's got an original um, MG Rover set from Rimmer Brothers. I uh, wouldn't normally do that but actually looking through they weren't that much dearer than sets you got on ebay in the fact that um 
we were buying some other stuff from Rimmer Brothers, so there was no real postage because the postage didn't get any higher. If you were just buying these on their own, then it probably would work out um, a lot dearer, but without the postage, they're not actually much, that much dearer. And the only good thing about these um, brake shoes, as well as being um, uh, sort of original ones, um, is that you get this nice little packet of um, all the bits that come with it you get all the um little um guiding bits you get the new belts and you even get those round um discs so yeah they're all the bits you get with it which normally you wouldn't get when you buy um a set of brake pads so being we've changed everything else and we definitely wanted these pieces and it's good to change those bolts it was certainly worth getting right so a caliper's all ready to go back on uh, it's all nice and painted now uh, of course we've removed the masking tape that's protected the new rubber boot from getting any paint on it we're leaving that little um blanking plate to where the brake part goes into we're going to fit that um, of course, we've got that nice bit of rubber that goes over the um, bleeding um, screw on the brakes. And um, these ones are actually marked up left and uh, right, so you can't get them round the wrong way. A little L there and uh, a little R there. And what we've done, although we've refurbished the parts, any bits we've removed, if they weren't marked like that, we've put our own little mark on. So it all definitely goes back on the same side that uh, it came from. I'll put copper slip in there, it'll attract the dirt, would it? Yes? Yes, yeah, yeah. Right, so that's the uh, new little disc protector. As you said, that's what we like about this um, kit, is that it comes with um, all the bits you don't normally get and you normally have to reuse what you've got. So we're now going to put the anti-squeal sliding plates in. And again, it's very rare that you uh, get these with any shoe, so it's certainly nice to have them. And they sit in top and bottom. Right, so we're going to put a little bit of copper slip on each end. Some people do it, some people uh, don't. It's like we've always done. We're only putting on a very small amount. Right, so we're now taking the little bolts out and uh, we are lucky because we got new bolts with the new sliding pin kit and we also got new bolts with the um, brake pad kits. So the good thing about that is that we will now have a spare set for another towing. Right, so that's now that caliper on. As you see, it's just a case of... Um, you know, gently pushing it on and they're getting it into position. As you see, we push the piston right back as far as it could go to give us the uh, right amount of space. And now what we've got to do is put the bolts back in to those uh, sliding bolts each side of the caliper. Right, so as we put the bolts in, another thing we've just done is made sure that these little piece of metal here, the flat, lines up with the caliper because that's what will stop it turning when you uh, eventually do that bolt up. And again, it's just a case of wiggling it into position so that those bolts then line up and once it's all done up, and uh, you get it sitting there right, it then settles itself into the right position.
and uh, again once they're done up we're then just setting them to the right torque setting and uh, as always as we normally say we're referring to the uh, Haynes manual as we're uh, out by the car So we're just making sure that everything still turns and nothing's um, obviously seized up or uh, catching badly. Right, so it's now ready to put the uh, banjo bolt back on where the brake fluid goes. And I hope you can see that's like a round circle and there's the hole where the brake fluid comes in. And because you don't know where that's going to line up, this um, bolt has actually got one little hole in it there. Hopefully you can see that as it focuses and um, a little collar so wherever that hole is there's enough gap round for the brake fluid to run round this collar through that hole and down through the middle and uh, into the caliper so yeah quite a clever um, little design and we've got two new um, copper washers to use as uh, well so that's the next thing is to get that back on and connect it Make sure that goes between those two pins. Right? Yeah. As you can see there the two copper washers on and uh, then the bolt just goes in and then we're tightening it up uh, as we've done with all the other bolts. Right, so I just thought I'd show you on the driver's side before we put the caliper on there. You can see that little um, metal bit that's uh, there, that bit that would make a noise if your pad's got really low. Uh, that goes on the um, inside um, of the car rather than on the uh, outside. Apart from that, it is very much the uh, same. I just thought I'd show that. And it also gives you a different view of the shoes in the... Um, caliper uh, bracket before the caliper goes on that we didn't get a view when we were doing it last time. That's the caliper in position we'll get on and do all the other bits we did on the uh, other side now. Right, so that's the driver's side caliper done as well. So now we're at the point to bleed the air out of the brakes and to get new brake fluid in because obviously some of the leaked out and those calipers are completely uh, empty of brake fluid. Uh, this is where the brake fluid goes in on top of the master cylinder on the uh, Rover 45s. Um, we prefer to do it the old fashioned way. Um, there are a lot of kits out there that are sort of a one man person where you um, put the brake fluid in a little container and then it'll use um, air from a tyre or you pump it up and uh, it pushes the brake fluid through. We've even got one of those but uh, we always on this there's two of us it's easier to do it the old-fashioned way of having one person down by the bleed nipple and the other person pumping the brake pedal uh, and we find although those kits do a good job um we only ever get a really good brake pedal when you do it this way i mean if you are on your own they're good and it also can be a way of getting out lots of air if you're completely changing the brake fluid and then you go over to the old-fashioned way at the end it's just what we find uh, because there's two of us we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way because we find that works the most reliable and with two of us it is the most easiest as well we're using um dot five and as i said that's where we put the brake fluid in you can see there's the little float it'd warm you if it got too low we put lots of cloth around the um brake uh, reservoir because what you don't want to do is get brake fluid on the paint because it really will do damage so sometimes we even have one person just up here keeping it topped up and making sure nothing spills out because that is the uh, real disaster if you get any brake fluid uh, on your paintwork so we're going to put that cloths round there and uh, then we'll start 
this is what we use. We have uh, an old jar with a hole in the lid, and then we've got this special um, pipe here. One end uh, is got this soft rub to go over the um, bleeding nipple and um, the other end has got a one-way valve on it you can see there and that also sits in some old brake fluids there's no way hopefully air can be sucked back in and then what we do is put that over there and uh, then what we do is I go into the car and uh, pump the brake pedal um, when it needs to be pumped and uh, we slowly work the uh, air out. Right, so we're all ready to get that air out the brakes. Uh, you always want to start the furthest away from the um, master cylinder where we're topping the fluid up to. On this car, the um, master cylinder is on the driver side and uh, we're not doing the back brake so we're going to be starting on the passenger side we do that first and then move over to the driver side and uh, what i do i leave the camera running i'll push my uh, foot on the brake and uh, hopefully you'll see the air coming out and i'll probably do three pumps to start off and then we'll carry on to get all that air out but that'll give you an idea of what it looks like give it three pumps Okay. Right, so before we do any more pumps, we're just going to check the uh, levels. Uh, not too bad, but a little bit low, so I'm just going to pour a little bit more in, so there's plenty in there, because if you run out of fluid, you'll end up putting even more air in than you started, so it's always worth keeping a check on that. So that's a little bit more topped up. As I said, we've got a bit of rag there. And uh, what we always do is put the lid back on the bottle because, again, the last thing you want to do is knock it over. One, it'll waste your fluid, and secondly, it'll do a lot of damage to your paint. And you don't really want this open to the air too long either. Right, so now we've come in the car. I just thought I'd show you what it looks like from this side. And uh, all I'm going to do is uh, pump it another few times to continue getting the air out. And the brake pedal it will go all the way down to the floor. So there's one, two, three, and I've stopped. One, and I've held it down. Right, so while my foot was still pushed down on the pedal, we've tightened up the um, bleed nipple, and then all we've got to do is uh, gently pull that away and check no fluid comes up. Double check it's tight. Yeah. And we move on to the other side. And you may have to come back and uh, do it again, but it looks like most of the ears come out at the moment, so it's time to go on to the other side, and then you sort of see what pedal you've got. Right, so we've now done the um, driver side and got there, uh, just as uh, I showed you, and uh, hopefully all going well. You should have um, a pedal. Uh, it certainly shouldn't go to the floor, as you can see, just a small amount of movement. It will feel different because the engine's not running with the uh, servo on. And then all we do then is just check that the brakes are just locking the uh, disc up. Right. Brakes are on. Put them on. On. Off. Off. On again. On. Yeah, off. Off. So yeah, just a basic initial test just to make sure that when you put your foot on the brakes that disc does uh, lock. Obviously the wheels are off and the car's not on the ground. Hopefully that's give you a little idea of how we um, bleed the brakes and why if there's uh, two of you or even a third person to pour the fluid in to keep the levels up, it's uh, in some ways easier than using one of those automatic or sort of one person bleeding kits and we find that... Uh, it does seem to work better. Right, so the last thing to do is to put the lid back on the brake fluid reservoir, checking it's to a good level, which uh, this one is. Again, go nice and uh, gently with it so that you don't splash any fluid up and it should just click and uh, lock like that. 
So that is more or less this video at uh, an end. Hopefully it's been of use to you. You've seen us um, take the calipers off, completely rebuild them and put a new seal kit in, put new shoes on as well, and then bleed all the air out at the end and uh, all the other little bits we've covered. As always, it's not a how-to, but just um, a chance for you to see how we do the job. So if you're thinking of doing or interested in how that job works, you you can have a little look through alongside looking at other videos and uh, using all the manuals as always thank you very much and if you liked it don't forget to subscribe and like and have a little look at our instagram twitter and don't forget to look through some of the other videos as well